Hi, Annette Lang here. Welcome to my podcast, The History of Personal Training, or at least my experience in it. This podcast will be a combination of my stories. Full disclosure, I might not remember things exactly the way that you did. Now, my stories of 30 plus years in the fitness industry and then specifically personal training. I was at the beginning of a lot of events, the firsts, so to speak, and so I hope you enjoy those stories. In addition, I'll be interviewing lots of different people whom I've met through the years, and I think that will help piece together a wonderful uh, timeline of the development of this profession that we now call personal training. Enjoy. Okay. I'd like to tell you a story about Bob Esquery. When I started at Equinox Fitness Clubs in 1993, maybe 1994, it was, there was one location. It was a family owned business, the Erico family, and they had one location. And Bob was the corporate fitness director. Now you'll hear one of my interviews with Bob soon, I'm sure. But I want to tell you my story, uh, maybe first. I was definitely paranoid when I walked in there and got hired as a personal trainer. In another story, I mentioned, um, you know, some famous guy got hired the same day I did. And so I started working as a personal trainer on the floor. So what happened was you would have to sign up for shifts. And we called it working the floor, which meant that People were working out by themselves. My responsibility was to make sure that nobody got hurt, to keep the place clean, and to help people with their workouts if they needed it. Now, of course, my other job was to pick up clients, so to speak. My job was to have people ask me to be their personal trainer, and then that would be the one-on-one that you would do on other times. So in other words, not when you were on your shift. And so... We would do things like uh, orientations and assessments so that we could, you know, talk to people and get in front of people with the idea being that you wanted to quote unquote, build your book as to be a private personal, sorry, to be a personal trainer one-on-one to where you would not have to work the floor anymore. And so I tell, you know, I think back to, I used to call it the zombie phase because On the one hand, I was working several shifts a week and the shifts would be at different times. So in other words, you didn't want to always have a shift from like 12 to 4, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because then if somebody was working out there, you didn't have any other time. Like, you know, you wanted to stagger your shifts to different times. So if somebody said, hey, can I hire you as a trainer? I'd say, yeah, I'm here. I'm also here at other times. So anyway, I lived in Brooklyn and worked uh, at the Equinox, which was on the Upper West Side in Manhattan. And so there wasn't enough time to come home during the day. Traditionally, personal trainers are busy in the morning, obviously, before people want to go, before people go to work, you know, and then maybe a little bit, um, you know, made to late morning. And then there's tends to be a gap of a few hours in the afternoon. And then you can do more training at night when people get off of work. So there was not enough time for me to come back to Brooklyn. And so I seriously, I used to walk to Central Park and take a nap and just lie down on the bench. And I thought, wow, if somebody from Equinox sees me lying on the bench, they're going to think, you know, I'm this homeless person working as a personal trainer. So you got to remember, this was before the days when Equinox had, you know, facilities for the trainers. We barely had a room that we could, you know, put our stuff in, you know, lockers and things like that. Now trainers have nice uh, little conference rooms and areas where they can even take a nap if they need to. But that was really intense. And so then Bob Bob Esquery was the fitness director, and boy, when he was watching you train, I was nervous. And so, you know, because I had just done the Nautilus high-intensity stuff. I didn't work as a personal trainer before, and I really found that I was liking it, though. And so the, the, the best part about this story is Bob was the corporate fitness director for the newly, um, the newly started Equinox Fitness Training Institute, EFTI. And he asked me, do I want to help him? So be his program director. And if you know Bob Esquery, this is hilarious because the guy, you know, he was one of these guys who you'd walk in at eight in the morning, you'd say, good afternoon, Lang. You know, uh, very, very proud of the fact that he worked like crazy. And so... 
he asked me if uh, I wanted to work for him, and it would be part-time, a part-time job as program director for EFTI and then still do full-time personal training. And I'll never forget one day I was looking at him at a meeting uh, with a couple other people on, you know, all working together. I said, Bob, you know, this list of things that you gave me that has to be done, I mean, this list is a mega full-time job. And there's no way that I can get all this done on a 20-hour part-time work schedule. And he goes, well, you just do the best you can, Lang. But it was just, you know, just a great work ethic. And we just had such a wonderful time. And it was really cool training. This was when I was off the floor, right? So I had a full book, so to speak, you know, 20, 30 sessions a week. And then I would fill in those gaps of the quote unquote quiet time with the work at EFTI. So it was a perfect arrangement. And then um, the family wanted to start opening up more clubs. And so that was, that's, that's what we did. We basically got the trainers ready as the club opened, got them ready with the uh, foundation education uh, components. So I'll explain more of that and um, tell you more of the stories about working with Bob. More to come.